the honor to present the Department of Urban and Regional Planning and Geoinformation Management, in short, the PGM department, in a bit more as, as an overview today. And to start, and having listened to all your departmental presentations, which were quite informative for me, I like that, um, I would like to say, well, PGM is one of the four applied departments of, of, of uh, ITC for sure. And we are probably also, I'm not, well, Richard, you may, I may hope you agree, a colleague of mine, we have the most social science related department in ITC. And as such, I would conclude, and that's my, my assumption, we are more software users, software consumers, and software developers. We, we do pretty much, we use a lot of software, but we hardly produce. I have one example, luckily, that I, that I will present proudly this afternoon, where we develop some software, but we mainly produce software, uh, use software, consume software even, manual use. And uh, well, the other question that came up in the beginning, we also we don't have software developers anymore. We used to have a long time ago, and sometimes we still remember that. That was nice times when we had one in our department. That's a long time ago. We don't have that anymore. Um, sometimes we regret that. But on the other side, I'm, uh, side, and I'm happy for this afternoon to show we kind of also develop what you, this, I like this term that you coined, software development researchers. So we develop these people. And, and that's, I think that's a nice notion that I learned today. All right, so that's why we don't develop software. I will give a very brief overview of more the topics and the, and the fields that we work in in the PGM department. In very short, the research theme that uh, we, that is, that we uh, have as our, in our department, it's called PLUS, and PLUS stands for People, Land, and Urban Systems. So in, in short, in a nutshell, we deal with societies, with people in, in urban areas, with urban societies, and their interaction with the physical environment, but also with the social environment and with the technolog technological environment in cities, in the urban areas, in the global south, but also in the global north. In uh, a bit more detail, a bit of an overview of the research that we do. So what we do, we analyze spatial and temporal dynamics within complex urban regions and their hinterland from a land administration point of view, from, but also from an urban planning, urban and regional planning point of view, analyzing transformation processes of cities, urban growth, urban development, uh, interaction between people, land tenure and land uses, and, and urban systems over time, and also analyzing and, and developing solutions or, or uh, yeah, well, concepts, strategies to address human needs and human behavior, or how to take human behavior in cities into account. We focus on participatory and inclusive planning and decision making. That is our key, our bread and butter as, as urban planners, as regional planners that we look at, and I will present one example this afternoon, as I said, how we support uh, planning by means of digital tools there. And we address topics like social, uh, socio-spatial equity, climate change and disaster impact, sustainable development. And just to give you a very bit more uh, overview on this type of different topics that we address, I have a very few slides on different fields of our research. One field, and that's more on the land ad administration group in our department, it's on responsible land administration and land information modeling. So the, the key research question here in, in short is something like how to combine GeoICT and institutional uh, arrangements for safe land tenure or for land tenure. And that includes, for instance, automation of feature extraction, boundaries of plots and, 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 and parcels, tailored GeoICT geo solutions for such crowdsourcing and blockchain technologies. Fit for purpose approaches, uh, and, but also community participation and government uh, acceptance and impacts in land tenure management, basically. The second field that I'm a bit more in uh, it's, um, is disaster risk management uh, and climate change, and how to address that by means of um, urban and regional planning approaches. We are a bit like 
in between, or we had tried to cover the entire schema that you see there in the middle. So on the one end, we, we model and we, we assess climate risk and hazards from, uh, resulting from natural and ha technological hazards, but also climate change hazards, and the risks that it means for people in urban areas and urban systems, but also how the urban fabric shapes such kind of climate disasters or, and, and strengthens them and, and, and triggers them. Uh, and, and urban planning as our domain, as our scientific field, is somewhat in between to, to try to bridge between those two uh, pillars that, that are systems as such. Third, third field, sustainable infrastructure and infrastructuring these, uh, and that includes technical as well as social and, and um, transport infrastructure, cycling systems in cities, water systems, sewage systems, uh, other infrastructure systems, and how we make them fit for the future, how we develop them uh, in an equitable approach also in, in to, to ensure equity in, in access to infrastructure. Um, advanced geo-information and earth observation for collaborative planning, that's the field that I'm in. Um, we use Earth observation data and geoinformation data to develop 3D models to engage with stakeholders, for instance, in planning processes but, and also digital twins uh, to land tenure uh, boundary extraction, but also geo ICT tools to engage with stakeholders in planning process. And the photo on the right side is something that I will show, explain a bit more in detail in the afternoon. Uh, and last but not least, we also look at human and environment interactions in cities, understanding how people affect nature and, and vice versa, using agent-based models and, and other modeling approaches to understand needs and human behavior and well, uh, limitations or capacities of human environment in urban areas. Um, this so much as far as a very rough and quick up uh, outlook or, or summary of our fe research fields. I was asked a little bit at short notice to, um, to, to present the PGM department. That's why I had not the chance to do a survey that I liked very much that Frank showed. We did one survey on what kind of software we used in our department. We did one very long time ago, Richard, when was that 2013, 14, something like that? that gave a huge variety of software, some open source, uh, some not yet open source, uh, not open source then. Um, I would not guess, be able to guess how much we, so open software we use nowadays, I hope more. The tendency is definitely still there, but I would not able to tell all kind of software uh, systems and tools that we use in the department. But I'm happy to discuss with you in the coffee break when you have particular, particular questions for some fields and how we do things or what kind of features, tools, and software pieces we use there. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Johannes. Yes, it, indeed, it was a very short notice, and uh, yeah, we are grateful for, no, we for, 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 for your presentation. So if there are any questions, we can take one question very quickly, yes, then. I mentioned uh, in your department you follow a uh, participatory, inclusive approaches mm -hmm. uh, to engage its, its stakeholders. And so, mm -hmm. so um, it wasn't specifically mentioned, but I'm wondering is there, a, in, in terms of software development, anything directly connected to citizen science, for instance? Yes, also to citizen science, uh, in relation to citizen science. And I will present a project this afternoon that we now extend towards citizen science. So citizens are one key stakeholder that you try to engage in, in participatory processes. It's more difficult to reach out to them than to, to others, to, to communities, to practitioners, to, to, to uh, policy and decision makers. But I mean, it, it's one of the, the key pers key group of stakeholders that's affected by all kind of planning decisions. That's why it's important to reach out to them. and. It's more difficult than reaching out to other professional stakeholders, but we are more working on that. And that, that's definitely a field that, that's in our portfolio. Thanks. Thank you very much.